I hear what Your Honour says, but in my respectful submission, there's a critical issue that needs to be addressed, which is the issue of causation. Uh, the witness already is subject to protective measures. Uh, the quite uh, extensive protective measures by way of pseudonym, voice distortion, and all the rest. Uh, Your Honour, we don't know. I have no details. Uh, Your Honour, if I'm privy to the details, of course, I can look into it and give my own suggestion on the actual facts. But without that benefit, what I will say is this, that uh, there are many potential ways in which individuals uh, can learn about or seek to inquire about uh, the identity of a witness if they're intent on creating mischief. And it starts from investigators in the prosecution on the ground, the OTP, to the registry, to the chambers, to the defence, to the public, to third parties, to hackers and the rest. There's a whole variety of measures. And what the court needs to be satisfied in my respectful submission, that the already um, uh, very heavy measures are not sufficient to prevent this witness being in jeopardy. And in that assessment, it is relevant to bear in mind where the witness is. And you're, that's part of the balancing exercise in deciding whether or not uh, um, hearing should be in close session because in reality, the defence should not be punished because of a breach of a third party. And we say we are punished. Mr. Khan, can you look at Article 68.1 yes, of the statute? Yes. Quote, the court shall take appropriate measures to protect the safety, physical and psychological well-being, dignity and privacy of victims and witnesses, full stop. Uh, so far, so good. Does it say in there that these measures would be taken or are appropriate only when threats are from a particular source? Uh, Your Honour, no, but in assessing when to apply Article 68 and to what extent uh, measures are needed, it must be read together, we say, with uh, the rights of an accused in Article 67 and elsewhere. And you're quite right. You're quite right on that. We're talking here about appropriate balance, and the question I asked Mr. Keegan Katwa again comes back to you. When the court's desire has been to hear as much of the testimony as possible in public sessions. But while that is going on, some individuals somewhere are busy trying to um, collate information, go behind protect, uh, protective measures to unmask the identity of witnesses. Are we to ignore that and proceed? Not, not a bit of it, Your Honour. It would be, it would be uh, terrible to ignore it. But, Your Honour, we say that um, Article 68, of course, must be read reasonably. The court, of course, take numerous measures to ensure that Article 68.1 has been adhered to, from familiarization meetings, we even met, meet the witnesses uh, in advance, to the protective measures that are ordered in court, to VW presence. There's a whole raft of measures that ensure that Article 61 is actually protected. Um, Your Honours uh, have seen how witnesses have been questioned um, and that their well-being and dignity has been preserved at all times. But, Your Honour, in uh, assessing the necessary measures, we say it is important to look at the core rights of the defence. It is important to look at the core rights of, of, of the defence. And, Your Honours, if third parties can do acts that frustrate those rights, the court must be cognizant of them. So then what should the court do? Your Honour, I've said before, and I, I do with respect emphasise it's an important point, investigations are required. Uh, the court, of course, would be loath always to ent uh, engage in knee-jerk reactions that there's cause and effect, as a cause regarding attempts to inquire regarding identity, uh, and the effect is curtail the rights of defence to a public hearing without further investigations regarding how are these mischief makers, um, what attempts are being made, and may does I, it relate I, to the public portions of the testimony? Let me, Mr. 
Ken, let me, uh, this, this seems to be a certain uh, conception. I do not want to characterize it either miss or pro. Conception that um, the matter of public hearing is only exclusively in the interest of the defense. I'm, I'm not sure that that proposition is accurate. One could see the interest of the defense um, in the matter in a big way. But one would think that it is in the interest of justice generally, and that includes the interest of the prosecution because, as well, it, during the case for the defense, it will be in public, in theory, we hope, and defense witnesses would also testify. The prosecution investigators would also, and people who are interested uh, on that side of the case, would also be listening uh, in public and doing the same things you would want to do when prosecution witnesses are testifying in public. So it is in the interest of justice, and we all know it, and that's what we want to do. The, and that's not the concern, really. The concern is this trend of some people, whoever they are, who are trying to do this. That's the concern. It's now past 11. If you can have two more minutes, to wrap it up so we can call in the witness. And yes. Your Honor, I think it was yesterday <clears throat> where I mentioned about <clears throat> the activities of uh, certain parties in Kenya to raise the temperature. And I can't remember if it was in open or closed, so I'll say no more than that, but I referred to the activities of, of third parties in Kenya trying to up the ante. Now, everything must be looked at holistically. In relation to this particular matter, I'm of course handicapped in the sense that I don't know more. But Your Honours, I would ask the court to be, uh, of course, as always, vigilant in checking whether or not the cause of the information is from the witness alone, or whether or not it is corroborated by VWU, and uh, proper investigations are needed to make sure that actually what is said to be the case actually is the case, and individuals are not seeking to get protective measures for reasons that don't withstand scrutiny. Um, Your Honour, if uh, these measures are successful, and we end up going into closed session for this witness, I do uh, without a crystal ball, of course, without the wisdom of a Cassandra, I, I predict that uh, this will become the normal course of events because those people that are playing these games will continue and we will be frustrated. So the right action is to investigate these people, find out what's happened, and prosecute them as necessary. All right, Mr. Ken, um, we will leave it there for now. Uh, it is past five past 11. Um, now we should... I don't need to hear from you, Victims Council, please, on this one. We have to move quickly. I think the points were made. Thank you. Um, we will be rising for lunch at 12 today. As you know, we started on, um, there was the request that we started later, as we've done today, in order to accommodate the logistics. Um, of another case uh, that's also another important case that's taking place today. Uh, we will rise at 12 for lunch, uh, but we will be sitting to 5 o'clock today. Um, hopefully we can uh, cover ground at that time. But for now, um, we will bring down the blinds and call in the witness. Your Honor, while that's being done, perhaps a request could be given that uh, air conditioning does not turn off at 4 p.m., but should continue until 5. Otherwise, the last one hour becomes rather oppressive in many senses. If they turn it off, you can tell us. It's a good thing you know.